Our reading today is the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35, and then verses 41 to 51. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And then from verse 41. At this the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word to us. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, shine your light on the words we read so that we may gain wisdom from them. Open our hearts and minds to receive what you want us to hear today. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I'm going to start here by looking at the context of our Bible reading today. An enormous crowd had gathered to hear Jesus teach and perhaps see a few healing miracles. It went on a bit longer than anyone had anticipated. It was getting late and the people were getting hungry. No one wanted to go home in case they missed anything. And we all know the story of Jesus taking the loaves and fishes that a young boy offered to share and multiplying them to feed a crowd of 5,000 people. After that miraculous meal, of course, they pushed closer and closer to Jesus, wanting to see more miracles. There was a lot of work to make bread for the family meal. First of all, you had to grow the grain, then you had to harvest it, and then you had to grind it into flour, and then you had to make the dough, and then you had to bake it. And here was a man who had just made enough bread to feed more than 5,000 people out of nothing and gave it to them for free. Now that was the sort of man who would make a great king. And Jesus could see that that was what they actually wanted. Eventually, Jesus was totally drained, and he went off by himself up the mountain to pray. His disciples went across the lake on their boat, and Jesus joined them later by walking on the water. Not all the crowd went home. Some had stayed the night. And the next day, they found Jesus and started talking to him about how Moses had fed the people with manna in the desert for 40 years. And they compared that with Jesus feeding them with bread the day before. Jesus insisted that it wasn't Moses who had given the bread in the desert, it was God himself, and it wasn't Jesus on his own who had fed them. God had done the miracle and sent, multiplied the bread. Then he made this amazing statement. I am the bread of life, he said. All who come to me will never be hungry. All who believe in me will never be thirsty. Of course, Jesus was, wasn't talking about physical hunger and thirst, but spiritual. I have met people who don't believe in God. I've met people who don't believe in Jesus. They are all searching for a spiritual element in their lives. I went to Bali for a week with my daughter and her family. And there were Hindu temples and shrines everywhere. And I noticed that people had made little posies of flowers and left them in the roads 
on the pavements. Those who lived by the sea left them at the water's edge or, or waded out into the waves to set them afloat. I gathered that this was a form of offering or sacrifice that they were offering their gods, making these little posies and leaving them to be destroyed by traffic or by the ocean. They were hungry for the favor and care of their gods. Physical bread is a very basic food and it takes many forms. There is only one form of spiritual bread and that is Jesus. When Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he was saying that he was the one who gives life and sustains life. All who came to him would have eternal life. Even though they would eventually die, spiritually they would live in heaven for eternity. In John chapter 6 verse 33, Jesus said, For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Just as physical bread nourishes our bodies and gives us strength for our daily tasks, so Jesus nourishes our spiritual bodies. When we eat bread, it becomes part of us. When we come to Jesus, we become part of him and he becomes part of us. When God said the Israelites manna in the desert and multiplied the loaves and fishes to feed 5,000 who were gathered there, he was providing for their physical hunger. God has given us spiritual bodies and he knows that they need feeding. However, our spiritual lives are even more important to God and a different kind of food is needed to bring us into relationship with him. God is perfect. God is all righteousness. And more than anything, God is love. He loves each person on this planet as though we were the only person to love. God is the lawmaker and the judge. He sets the rules and he judges us all against that standard. And much as we try to be perfect, it just isn't possible. God saw that heaven would be very empty without those that he loved so much. Something had to be done. He came up with a plan. And that plan was Jesus. The penalty had to be paid. But if Jesus could become human and live the life of a normal man and be tempted as everybody else is and never ever give in to temptation, then he could die the death that we should die as payment for our sins. My son-in-law borrowed my car once and got a speeding fine. By the time I got the notification, Coral had gone back home to Singapore. I paid the fine and that was the end of it. It didn't matter who paid the fine as long as it was paid. And that is precisely what Jesus did. God sent Jesus into the world to be the bread of life. He has not only given us eternal life, but he sustains our spiritual life. Paul in Romans says, the consequences of sin is death. Jesus paid the price for, for my sin, for your sin, for the sins of all humankind. And he did that because he loves us and he wants us to be with him in heaven. Without Jesus, we may have existence, but we don't have life. Jesus said we have to come to him to receive the bread of life. That is God's wonderful gift to us. But we can't do it on our own. God draws us to himself. And how does he do that? I'm not even going to try to suggest how that happens. There are as many ways to be drawn to God as there are people on this planet. Eating bread once only provides fuel for our bodies for a short time. We need regular meals to keep our bodies strong to do all that we need to do. And it's the same with our relationship with Jesus. When we accept Jesus as our Saviour and Lord and give our lives to him, it's the beginning of our eternal life with him. When someone gives their lives to Jesus for the first time, they're just so full of joy and excitement. It's like they've been plugged into a power source. 
is what I call a fizzy feeling. They can't stop praying and talking about Jesus. It doesn't happen just once in our lives. When we pray or read our Bibles, we are nourished by the bread of life. When we get involved in Christian activities and we have regular fellowship with other Christians, there will be many times when Jesus feeds us with his presence and his love. Many times to get that fizzy feeling as our spiritual batteries get recharged. And that's why it's so important to keep in contact with our Christian family and friends during lockdown. We help and encourage each other when life gets difficult. When we first had lockdown, we had a long period of isolation. And for many people, it was really hard not being able to see and hug friends and family members. We couldn't worship together or, or meet in our home groups or, or our Bible study fellowships. Then we truly depended on Jesus for love and encouragement. He really became the bread of life for us. Jesus says to us every day, I am the bread of life. All who come to me will never be hungry. All who believe in me will never be thirsty. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have no words to tell you how grateful we are that you sent Jesus to be the bread of life for us. Not just for us, Lord, but for all people who have ever lived, who live now and who will live in the future. Because Jesus died for us, we can live forever with you. Help us to encourage people to come to you and receive the bread of life. During the hard times we are experiencing with the pandemic and, and the violence in our country, help us to stay optimistic and positive in our thoughts, words and deeds. Darkness has no power on its own because it is only the absence of light. May we walk with you always and bring the light of your love into the dark places of our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.